So Take Two has been on quite a run. It wasn't a Grand Theft Auto year, and yet um, it was a good one. A very good. What's working? Uh, we have one of these years where everything's working. It, it is a Grand Theft Auto year. We we launched Grand Theft Auto Five for new gen, and uh, Grand Theft Auto Online continues to perform. So at our company, Grand Theft Auto is a, is an important franchise in most years. But you're right, it wasn't a an initial release. release. Yes. It wasn't an initial release. We also we had our biggest holiday lineup ever, and it all worked. Uh, and we launched a new IP, Evolve. So WWE, NBA, Civilization, Evolve, and of course Grand Theft Auto V. So it's been a great year. How do you keep the momentum going? What's in the pipeline for 2016? That is always a challenge in the entertainment business. You're only as good as your next release. And the pipeline looks really interesting. We have, in addition to our franchises that come out every year, basketball and wrestling, entertainment, we have Battleborn. It's a new title from Gearbox, the company that brought us Borderlands, and we're really excited about Battleborn. We're going to be showing it off at E3, and we think it's going to be really exciting. Of course, we never know until we launch it, but that's something we're focused on. Strauss, why have we, we've talked many times about the differences between the gaming industry and the, and the industry that you once upon a time came from, the movie industry. Why haven't we seen more convergence between the two? If Avengers 2 can be a $2 billion property globally, if not more, why don't we see console video games based on Marvel comic book characters? Uh, I, well, we have, actually, of course. I mean, we, we, we have uh, not, we don't. Yeah, but, but they're not, not as big not as Grand Theft Auto. Is, well, Grand Theft Auto is a standard bearer. Yeah. So, but you have Batman, big title, uh, you know, coming from Warner Brothers Interactive, and they do a great job with that title. So there are some examples. I think the question is well posed, though, and I think the answer is all the intellectual property has to work for the medium in which it's launched. You know, we're not in the lunchbox business lunchbox business, right? We're not in the sunglasses business. We make entertainment, and our entertainment is incredibly complex and deep and highly cinematic uh, and difficult to make. And that's, of course, true of a motion picture as well. So you have to meet the audience where they are, and I think if you're derivative, you fail. Uh, so there are examples. Batman's a great video game and a great movie, typically. Uh, but not too many examples. Mortal Kombat was another good example. Why another title that's not ours. Why hasn't there been a huge Grand Theft Auto summer blockbuster, though? This seems like an obvious opportunity for the franchise to monetize. It's, I think from our point of view, um, we're not in the motion picture business, and so for us to license it to someone who is, first of all, would take the, the property out of our creative hands, at least somewhat, and secondly, the motion picture business isn't a great asset class. It's not a great way to make money. We don't really like the risk profile of the business. So we're very, very, very unlikely to produce and distribute motion pictures and to give other people the opportunity to do that with our intellectual property. We've done it on a very selective basis. It, it seems highly unlikely we would do it with such an important property as, as Grand Theft Auto. Even, even the smallest creative lapse would be a disaster. You don't watch Iron Man and think, oh, God, I really got to do this. <laughs> no. I did it once in my life. Yeah. It worked out really well. It I'm, really glad, I'm it. really glad I don't do it anymore. All right. <laughs> How about virtual reality? The Oculus Rift is going to become a consumer product. You and I will be able to buy it uh, just like we were able to buy Google Glass. And I'll be at the front of the line, though, with this one. You will? Oh, sure. But where does Take-Two stand on developing intellectual property for virtual reality? You know, the good news about our business is no one else can develop our intellectual property. So we have an opportunity to do a lot of homework, a lot of R&D, to see what consumers want in an interactive experience that involves virtual reality. And the jury's out. We don't know yet. Um, we're doing a lot of quiet work to figure that out, but I think the consumer has to vote. When the consumer votes, we'll be there. But what kind of quiet work are you working? I mean, is there That's a why relationship? it's quiet. Um, well, yes, but... You know, You're on live whatever TV, Strauss. <laughs> we need to make the some broad sketches. Here. Do you work pre-release with a company like Facebook to get access to a device like the Rift so that you can already? I, mean, I would imagine that that's the conceptually. Case. We want to make sure that we are in business with everyone who has VR offerings to come. Yeah, every of course, it's not just Facebook. And um, yeah. and yes, we're involved in trying to figure out what will delight the consumer. It remains to be seen whether you're going to want to have a vision occluding headset on to play multiple hours of video games. I will say this though, the reason I'm at the front of the line is I've had the products, a couple of the products demoed and it is an unbelievable experience. I like roller coasters and I had a roller coaster demo and it was and it wasn't even very high quality and it was as though you were there. Yeah? Yeah it was your remarkable. stomach felt a little sick? Oh no no it was beyond that. 